the studio from Creation Ministries International. Good morning, Dr. John. Morning, Rick. It's uh, great to have you here again, Dr. John. Of course, you're answering everyone's questions. Please, guys, send your questions through for Dr. John. Just send them through to our text line. That is SMS 0401-949-949. Now, maybe somebody's got a, uh, a question about the movie that we spoke about last week, Dr. John. There was a movie that was free all weekend. I don't think it's free anymore. Um, called Dismantled, which was a scientific deconstruction of the theory of evolution. And wow, I thought it was amazing. Yeah, uh, Mick, it was a, uh, a great movie. And of course, uh, the things that uh, we've talked about many times on this program and uh, plenty of information about the same sort of thing on uh, the Creation Ministries website, creation.com. But this movie uh, uh, featured about seven uh, very, very highly regarded uh, cr Christians who are scientists yep. and uh, demolished uh, a lot of the things that, like the uh, the age of the earth, you mm. know, the, uh, uh, the the way that some of these ages are derived, particularly the uh, uh, rock dating. Mm. That was uh, that was one of them, and of course, rock dating where they get the millions of years idea from. Uh, it can be shown that. When you even know the age of the rock being only 10, 20, 30, 40 years old, it still comes up with dates in the, uh, the millions of years. So the, uh, the rock dating idea really doesn't have anything going for it. And, of course, the other is the, uh, uh, the deterioration of uh, our genetics. Mm. And it, it demonstrates, and particularly the, uh, the fact that we're all descended from uh, one man and one woman back in the past, that uh, it can only have been a matter of thousands of years ago, uh, mm, yeah. as the Bible says. So really it was a, a very interesting movie. I thought it was very well done. Yeah. And I hope many of our listeners got to watch it. But uh, because it was free for about four days, all you had to do was click on the uh, the link on the the website. But look, uh, that that that's uh, now gone. But uh, if you wanted to uh, get hold of that movie, you could go to the Creation Ministries website and order it. It's called Dismantled, and it's a uh, it's about an hour and a half, and it's a, a well worthwhile documentary. Yes, absolutely. It is uh, 13 minutes past eight. We're with Dr. John and uh, we're waiting for your questions. Send them through to our text line 0401-949-949. Don Studio from Creation Ministries International. And uh, he's answering your questions that you send through to 0401-949-949. Dr. John also talks about news that's come out in the last week or so. And uh, Dr. John, we had a news article that uh, I saw in Science Alert. And it says, there may be planets out there better suited to life than Earth. What do you think of that one? <laughs> well, I saw the article, Mick, and uh, I, I thought it was, uh, it was, I mean, it was interesting mm. to, uh, to be able to read it. But the thing that struck me about it was it was a classic example of pretty much useless research. Mm. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I thought it was uh, useless. But what it's talking about, they're saying that uh, maybe out there, uh, there there may be uh, quite a number of planets that are even better suited to life on Earth. Because mm. the way the theory goes, here we are, we know about our solar system, we've got a sun in the middle and uh, then all the uh, planets revolving around the sun. So it's assumed that uh, out there in space there's got to be lots of other solar systems a bit like ours. Yep. And of course... Uh, Ours may not be the best one, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, of course, this was a uh, uh, an exciting paper and uh, artist's impression of what that super planet might have looked like. And I mean, it looked terrific. And yeah, reading the words, <laughs> it was quite graphic. I could yeah. see pictures in my mind. But and admittedly, the, the 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 you know the headline is there may be planets. In other words, the whole story is a whole maybe, isn't it? It is very much a, a maybe, uh, Mick. But, of course, the artist was able to come up with a, a world that looked even better than ours, you know, really looked like a, a, an Earth that you'd, you'd want to live on. <laughs> yeah, well, it sounded really good. I mean, it, it, it was, well, you know, this guy, Dirk schultz macuck from uh, Washington State University. He's an astrobiologist. 
So, you know, it sounds like this guy knows what he's talking about. Well, you, you, would, you would think so. But, look, first of all, I think we've got to uh, uh, d- uh, state what they're really talking about. They, they believe that there are plenty of these what they call exoplanets mm-hmm. out there. And uh, they think that they've been able to actually directly see some but the first one that they thought they saw uh, fizzled out. It, uh, it, <laughs> it, it didn't materialise, so that was wrong. But there are a number of things that give them the, the idea mm-hmm. that uh, way out there, there may be some of these what they call exoplanets. And what they're looking for is uh, they might focus on a star because you can't really see them directly. Yeah. And they might focus on a star and see a bit of a, a wobble in that star mm-hmm. and that suggests to them that maybe there's a, uh, a very high gravity planet uh, revolving around it that's causing it to wobble mm. or uh, they might see a, uh, a slight diminution in the light that the star emits from time to time mm-hmm. and then they think oh well perhaps that means that there's a planet passing in front of it to uh, to dim the light Yes. And, of course, that, uh, that whole idea has got uh, great relevance to the discovery of Australia because uh, Captain Cook was uh, sent with a whole uh, bunch of scientists out to Tahiti to uh, watch the transit of Venus. And that's where Venus crosses in front of the sun and it can be seen. Mm-hmm. And I think most of us will probably have seen a bit of uh, footage of that where Venus is this little black dot going across the bright sun in the, uh, the background. Mm-hmm. And uh, they all watched that in Tahiti and then uh, Captain Cook sailed south looking for this supposed great south land and guess what, he, he found it. In mm. fact, he, he ran into its barrier reef, yes. which, which, uh, which didn't help him. But look, uh, they think that uh, this indicates that there are a lot of these exoplanets out there. And I think the uh, astrobiologists have uh, um, identified uh, oh, over 4,000 of them. And this group of scientists picked out about uh, 24 that they thought were the best candidates for uh, a, a, an even better Earth. Yes. And uh, I really uh, I got a bit amused about it because uh, when, when you think about it, they, uh, they're, they're quite a fair way away. Uh, They said that they were all over 100 light years away. Mm -hmm. Now, 100 light years doesn't sound awfully much, but uh, when you remember that a light year is not a measure of time, it's a measure of distance. So 100 light years is the distance that light travels in a year, right? or 100 years in in that case. And when you think about it, we've got, uh, a lot of spacecraft out there, the mm-hmm. Voyager spacecraft and uh, New Horizons and so on. And New Horizons is the one that's been exploring Pluto over the last uh, couple of years. And it's actually the fastest spacecraft that we've ever sent out there. Mm-hmm. And it is really rocketing along. It, it covers a million miles in a day. Mm. Or 1.6 kilo- a million kilometres, that is. That's quite a bit. Mm. But When you actually uh, work out how long it would take, even travelling at that speed, to uh, go 100 light years in distance, it turns out it would take about 2 million years to get out there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, that's quite a while. So uh, Elon Musk is not going to be building a weekender out on one of these planets anytime soon. I don't. <laughs> no, well, when he sent his uh, Tesla into space two years ago, it was a bit of a test for him to see how long it would take to get to Mars. And I believe last week it did its first pass. Right. So it took like two years to get a uh, Tesla motor car out there. Uh, not that the motor car or the motor or anything had anything to do with it, but when the rocket sort of pushed it off, um, yeah, it was heading that way. And, of course, yeah, with a rocket, they reckon it'll be faster, but uh, we're talking, you know, light speed would take seconds. 
and uh, you know any sort of vehicle we create takes months. Yeah. Big difference. Big yeah, big look, difference. Uh, <laughs> it, they, they are so far away that uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why I thought the research was a bit useless. Mm. But some of the uh, the things that they came up with, uh, I mean, the the speculation was fantastic, and they went through all the sorts of things that would be needed for one of these planets to be more habitable than Earth. Yes. And uh, we'll, we'll have a chat about that when we come back. Yeah, OK. Well, I, I do know that they said um, uh, with the next space telescopes coming up, we will get more information, so it's important to select some targets. Yeah. And they're basically saying, well, you know, we don't know if there's anything out there, but we've got a space telescope coming up. We'll tell you this entire story about how many things we think are out there, but we don't know. Um, well, <laughs> we'll wait for the telescope, and it's still going to tell us they're 100 million light years away. Yeah. You are on 94.9 this morning. It is 25 minutes past eight. You're with Dr. John from Creation Ministries International. Please send your questions through. The text line or SMS line is 0401-949-949. So send your questions through via text to 0... John from Creation Ministries International. We've been speaking about... Uh, uh, something that was in the news last week, and that was that uh, a bunch of astrophysicists and guys have been looking at uh, planets out there in the cosmos, and they say that uh, they believe there's a whole lot of planets that could be better at supporting life than Earth. And, uh, of course, we've been talking about how far away they are. Dr John, I believe that uh, it takes 499 seconds for, for the, um, the light from the sun to reach Earth, yet it takes months and months for any of our spacecraft to reach the sun and of course uh, the fact that one light year just one single light year is nine trillion five hundred billion kilometers yeah it's interesting isn't it mick and uh, <clears throat> even with our space uh, our fastest spacecraft it would probably take uh, nearly two million years to get to even the closest of these uh, speculated uh, exoplanets, the uh, the ones that might have life out there. Now, it makes you wonder, though, all these guys that talk about it, they talk about how, you know, it could be better for us, you know, one day we could sort of... I mean, but we're never going to get there. <laughs> no, Mick, it, uh, it, it probably is uh, pretty useless speculation. But, look, um, it's interesting because all of it, revolves around um, the assumption of evolution. They believe that because the uh, world here has evolved, then maybe it evolved a bit better out there. Mm. And, uh, I mean, that flies in the face of a lot of the information that we, uh, we do have. I mean, you'll often read that uh, our Earth is in this uh, supposed Goldilocks zone, mm. you know, where absolutely every condition is uh, just right for, uh, for life to have formed. Just right. And they're saying, you know, if we go another degree warmer, the, the Earth is going to be in all sorts of dire straits too. Yeah, well, uh, but look, Mick, they, uh, they figured out some of the uh, things that they could improve on mm -hmm. that would make one of these planets even better Ooh. than Earth. And you've hit on a beauty there. Well, they, they suggested that it would be better for them to be about five degrees warmer. Right. Uh, now, you know, I mean, uh, we're told that if ours were five degrees warmer, that would be the end of all of us, you know. Mm, mm. I mean, uh, we'd, we'd all be drowned by melting ice caps and uh, we certainly wouldn't be able to cope. But th they figured that uh, five degrees warmer would be even better than uh, what we have on Earth. Right, yeah. But look, uh, the, the assumptions are that they said that since they believe that Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, yeah. would be better for it to be a little bit older, like somewhere between <laughs> 5 and 8 billion years, uh -huh. because that would allow more time for life to evolve <laughs> and presumably for the aliens to get a bit more intelligent than, uh, than we are. So, uh -huh. so, you know, you can speculate all of these things and it should be uh, a little bit larger so that there'd be more uh, habitable surface area and uh, a better gravity so that it would be able to retain an atmosphere longer. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, we've got an atmosphere on Earth uh, because of the gravity of the Earth, but there are plenty of other planets with gravity that don't have 
atmospheres, yes. anything like ours. So, look, uh, it's all very, very uh, speculative. And I just thought, that when I read the article, I thought, these guys are, are really actually looking for funding for their research because yeah. th this stuff is completely useless. We're never going to get there. But whenever you mention something about uh, the potential for alien life, well, everybody gets interested. Yeah. And, and so uh, scientists have got to live and they need to have, to have their research funded and themselves paid so that they can live. And when you put all of this stuff out there, you're more likely to generate funding from the university or whatever to do more of the same useless yeah. research. Well, it's it's interesting read anyway. And, and, and look, the media did jump on it. It was published in all sorts of places, including Science Alert and uh, Astrobiology and a whole bunch of other places. Media love that stuff because we like to read it. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you've read the whole thing, you sort of go, OK, so they're basically saying... Um, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. They, they've just made up. It really, it's it's a list of something that some astrobiologist would really love to see, um, but he can't because we don't have a telescope big enough. That's pretty much what they say. And we're never going to get there, mm. you know. So, and and we don't even know that these planets really do exist. You yeah. know, part of the belief that they do is based on evolution. Mm. and uh, not creation. Well, we believe that this Earth was created and created only 6,000 years ago. So uh, how anything else out there could be uh, even older than Earth, you know, in the 5 to 8 billion years, then uh, it's all just uh, evolutionary speculation. Mm. But it's interesting and uh, it generates interest and it probably generates funds and that's what it's all about. Yes, sadly, funds going to something that uh, seems pretty useless. You are on 94.9 this morning at 17 minutes to nine. To John, more stuff out of the news this week. I believe um, Prince William has been in the news. Yes, he, yes, he has, and, uh, and, and Kate and uh, David Attenborough. Mm. And uh, there was a, a, it was a great doco, actually, uh, on Channel 10 last Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started off with, uh, with Kate christening a, a new Antarctic research ship. Uh, called the Sir David Attenborough. Yes. And uh, she cut the ribbon and uh, the bottle of champers went down and smashed against the side and they christened the ship. But uh, there was quite a bit of uh, interchange between um, uh, Kate and William and uh, David Attenborough. Yes. And I got the impression that uh, Sir David is, is handing over the environmentalist baton to... Prince William, mm -hmm. that, uh, and and I've seen William a couple of times in the uh, the news this last week uh, along similar lines, but look, it was a uh, a very interesting uh, documentary. A couple of confronting things in there. Did they too. talk about Boaty Book Boatface? Oh uh, yeah, well that's that was the original name that they proposed. They for this got ship. the public to uh, to vote for it. They all <laughs> voted for Boaty McBoatface, <laughs> and <laughs> now it's being called Sir David Attenborough. R S R R S Sir David Attenborough. Yeah, well yeah, there the you public go, got ripped you know. off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look, uh, look, it it was very interesting and a lot of confronting things actually in that documentary. Uh, I mean, I'm glad William's taking an interest in, in conservation because mm. some of the things really need to be looked at. And they took him, this was, uh, this was terrible, they took him into a, uh, a warehouse in Africa yep. and it was full, a huge warehouse full of crates and crates of elephant's tusks. Mm. You know, and uh, uh, only about half of them had been uh, confiscated from poachers. But the thousands of elephants that must have been slaughtered for, yeah. oh, I mean, it really was just awful. And the, the same sort of thing goes on uh, with um, rhinos and uh, rhino horns. You know, the, yeah. the, uh, <coughs> when you see what has actually been confiscated and stored there, and you imagine how much has actually got out on the black market as uh, ivory, yeah. the number of elephants that have uh, been slaughtered for that is just absolutely terrible. Mm. But look, 
Uh, it, it did strike me that uh, Sir David was handing over the environmentalist baton to Prince William. Mm. And uh, there were a lot of, uh, lot of great things on the program, a lot of school projects that uh, are happening in, in England there was quite an amusing one in uh, Liverpool, a, a school there have got a, um, an insect house that they've built that they call Buggingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Prince William was, uh, was quite taken with this. But there's lots of other things going on. They've got a lot of uh, school kids in um, marine environmental projects and uh you know getting birds back into some of the marshland in in england it was uh, really good but what, uh, there's a couple of things that bothered me uh, a bit about it i mean there's a few things about david attenborough that uh, bother us at creation ministries as well i yeah. mean his programs are beautiful you know it's yeah. wonderful watching his uh, his nature programs but he always gets in this bit about uh, evolution and millions of years and and so on and i hope william doesn't uh, pick up on that, I yes. mean, I, I'd love to see him as a conservationist, but uh, promoting the millions of years, and and I mean, there's David Attenborough, very much provo- promoting climate change as well. Mm. You know, there he was with um, uh, Greta Thunberg, and you know, he's getting on well with her. So there, there's a lot of these other things that are, are probably not, um, not a, a bit more propaganda rather than than truth i mean the program had uh, shots of glaciers melting and all of this sort of stuff and uh, i i really uh, thought you know it doesn't matter uh, whatever is done by the world in the way of trying to uh, reduce emissions it's never going to be enough for the climate change protesters well i saw something the other day in the news about uh uh, some of these glaciers melting and they're now picking up stuff that that that's like you know from 800 years ago and i thought well that means there wasn't ice there 800 years ago yeah, well, so it's not the first time that we've been in this situation yeah look uh, th- th- there's a lot of propaganda out there uh, mick and i was very disturbed really to see the uh, the protesters again last tuesday when the the treasurer brought down the budget they were still protesting about uh, climate change and not being enough done in the budget. Mm. Now, when you think about it, for the last nine months, there's been not a plane in the sky, not a, not a cruise ship on the ocean. <laughs> Half the cars have been locked up in, in garages. And uh, I did read that over the last nine months, Worldwide emissions have been reduced by about 17%. Mm. Now, that is a huge reduction. Yep. You know, I mean, uh, there is no program that you, know, you could put out that is ever going to get a reduction like that. Yeah. And, and look at the cost. You know, the world economy has been absolutely decimated. Uh, the Treasurer said in the budget speech that 600 million people throughout the world have lost their jobs mm. 600 billion i mean that is just astonishing isn't it mm. you know so that's been the price that we've paid for a 17 percent reduction in emissions well, and as far as the million. protests are concerned it's not enough mm. you know so really and and i've mentioned many times on the program that yes you can demonstrate climate change occurring And yes, you can demonstrate increased human activity, but you can't directly relate the two. You know, when when people read that the science is in, that's not true. The Mm. science may be in about climate changes that are occurring, and it may be in about increased human activity, but it is not in about relating the two, because you cannot directly do that. You might speculate that it could be there, but mm-hmm. uh, but you can't demonstrate that it is there, and uh, th- this is uh, something that really does disturb us a bit about uh, uh, climate change on uh, Creation Ministries. We're uh, we're not climate change deniers. Climates do change. There's no yeah. doubt about it. But uh, you need to have a healthy degree of speculative uh, of uh, scepticism about how much human activity is contributing to it. That's mm-hmm. something that you really don't know.
Yeah, absolutely. Of course, human activity contributes a lot to pollution. We know that. We can see the pollution around us, and that's the sort of thing that oh, I think it's OK for people to put their hand up and say, hey, let's do something about it. But, uh, yeah, when it comes to the actual climate changing and stuff that's happening now, they go, look at this catastrophic, you know, ice melt and stuff. And oh, I still think, well, if it was like that 800 years ago, it hasn't changed much. It's just been a cycle, hasn't it? That's right. And uh, it hasn't stopped the uh, bushfires going on in California at the moment. It hasn't stopped the uh, floods that are occurring in Europe. All of these things have been cyclical and they do happen from time to time. Mm. So uh, uh, I think... People need to uh, have a healthy degree of scepticism getting uh, hitching their wagon to any of these um, uh, other causes. There's only one cause as Christians we need to uh, promote, and that's the cause of Jesus. You mm. know, we, we know for sure that he's paid the price for our sin, and we know for sure that those who put their trust in him have an eternity. So that's really what Christians need to be focusing on. Absolutely. Here with Dr. John, another awesome, another awesome morning. Thank you, Dr. John. You're back next Tuesday.